Yeah, so yesterday we looked at uh, we looked at the traditional management theories. So where we looked at the bureaucratic theory, we looked at the, uh, the administrative theory and then the scientific theory. We also talked about the human relations theory yesterday. Um, so today uh, we are focusing on modern theories of management. Um, if you read different resources, you realize that you have a number of these theories. So uh, the two lectures, uh, the one for yesterday and the one we are going to have now, they will not look at all the theories. So if you want to get more information on the different theories, uh, you can uh, do uh, further reading uh, on the different resources. Uh, using the different textbooks that we really provided you. So in this presentation, we will basically look at the systems theory, the contingency theory, the complexity theory uh, as the major focus of this. So of course, we have other theories that are included in, but we'll just briefly look at them. So with these theories, of course, you need to know, um, uh, you need to be able to explain what they are and how they can actually be applied in real uh, management situation, okay? Uh, so that's basically what we are going to focus on. <clears throat> okay, uh, so like I said, systems theory, contingency theory, we'll look at total quality management, and then we'll look at complex theory, and then the re-engineering theory. So there are basically five theories. Uh, that we are going to look at. So let's start with the systems theory. Uh, systems theory is about viewing organizations as complex and also interconnected, okay? Uh, interconnected systems. This is to say that, uh, you see, the organization is actually composed of different, different people working in different departments. Uh, undertaking different tasks, okay? Uh, so for example, you have the finance working with the human resource, uh, the human resource working with the, uh, the supervisors, and then you also have the, uh, the supervisors working with their, or their supervisors too, and that is at the, at the top level management. And then you also have the top level management working with the, uh, for example, if you have the executive director working together with the board of directors. So you, this is to say that you have different, different parts uh, of the organization all working together in a collaborative manner such that uh, the objectives of the organization can be achieved. So you need to, if you're looking at an organization, uh, you need to look at it in, in a sense that you have these different parts. It's, it's a complex organization, basically, that has different parts that are interconnected. Uh, so uh, you can also see this here. Um, these different parts can be categorized into the inputs, the processes, and then the, the output. So for example, if you look at uh, a typical public health organization, let us say an international NGO, uh, the international NGO that is uh, providing, uh, let us say, um, um, uh, that is offering research and is also may perhaps doing, uh, let us say, um, uh, health promotion campaigns, vaccinations and things like that. So for, for this organization to be able to carry out this, they need, of course, the human resource, they need data, they need to have computers, that is technology part. Uh, they need to have uh, the resources in terms of financial resources or the funds. So all these are put together as inputs. And now the process part looks at how, um, how these interventions are actually being carried out. Okay, if it is the vaccination, if it is the health promotion uh, campaigns, um, how are they being carried out? 
the actual processes are very, very, very important. So here you look at the, the, the actual operations, you look at the, the decisions that are being made, the management decisions that are being made, how the employees actually do work. And then the output in this case is basically about, because it is a public health uh, intervention, um, you will see the output as the services rendered, okay? It's, it's not like what you look at in terms of production, okay? Uh, where you have goods, but for public health or health interventions, you basically look at services. So the nature of services, how many people are vaccinated, the message has reached to how many people and things like that. That is basically um, uh, the output uh, that you look at. Okay, so in public health, uh, you just basically need to understand that uh, we work in a, in a dynamic environment where we have uh, different entities uh, which in themselves are also uh, complex, okay? So we have dynamic systems. So you need to understand how this is, how uh, the, the, the organization is going to interact with the different um, uh, entities within this system, okay? The limitations of this C theory is that it oversimplifies, uh, oversimplifies uh, the kind of work that organizations do, okay? So the organizations actually do complex work or work in complex situations that cannot just be explained by the systems uh, theory, okay? The other point is that it lacks specificity, does not provide details on how decisions are made. So if you understand that organizations are complex and they, they have interconnected parts, how does that help you in making decisions? So it is a, not directly applicable or practical in, in application, in, 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 in real uh, practice. Okay. So we move to the next slide. So we are going to look at the contingency theory. Uh, with this theory, um, it proposes that there is no best way a manager can lead. Okay, there is no best way to, to be a manager. Uh, there is no best way. Uh, there is nothing like uh, one size fits, fits all. So that means that um, you need to be able to, 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 to choose the best approach depending on the context, uh, depending on the different internal and external factors here, which we are calling the contingencies, okay? So the core thing here is that uh, the way you're going to manage depends on particular context and the situation. There is always no one size fits all solution in terms of management okay so the organization um, exists in a particular context there are different factors which are internal and external that influence how the organization is actually operating so you need to understand these factors for you to be able to lead very well so you need to understand the organizational size the culture behavior resources technology task complexity these are internal factors. You need to understand them and then know how you can actually be able to lead or manage. And then you also look at the external factors. Um, the organization does not work in isolation. It works uh, uh, in a situation where external factors actually influence its operations. So industry trains, competition, uh, economic situations, government regulations, all these affect how organizations um, operate, okay? So that means that for you to be able to manage, you need to understand that these factors actually have to be taken into consideration and there is no best, uh, one best way in which you can manage or lead an organization. The limitations that uh, it, of course, it requires extensive data uh, collection and analysis to understand the context, okay? So it, it is um, resource intensive. Um, it is very challenging to identify the most relevant contingencies. The, the, 
what are those factors that are very relevant and how do, do they actually influence or actually interact with one another to influence how the organization or how you actually manage the organization. Okay, so within the contingency theories, we have other sub theories, if I can say that, um, by different people. Uh, we shall not look at uh, the details of each of these theories. But basically, it is all about the recognition that you don't have a static uh, situation in which the organization operates. There are different dynamics that affect the operation of an organization. So we have environmental uncertainties. Uh, you also have issues to do with changes in technology, and then also uh, the ability of the leader to, to, to adapt new leadership skills, uh, leadership uh, styles and, and things like that. Um, so we move forward. So in public health, um, you basically need to, uh, to design programs and policies um, when you have considered the impact that could be caused by local factors, local needs, resources, and uh, cultural uh, factors. Okay? So this basically is to say that uh, an intervention in one place may not be directly transferred to another intervention. If the, has, if the intervention has been successful here, it may not be successful in another place. Okay, So you need to understand that uh, the way you implement an intervention may not necessarily be the same. And that's why we are saying there is no one size fits all. So you need to be able to, to, to tailor the intervention according to the prevailing uh, situations or the circumstantial factors or what you can call the contextual factors. And you also need to be able to adapt, okay? You need to get a leadership style that can work uh, in, in a particular context. And then also issues to do with decision, um, decision making, you need to look at these factors, situation of factors and the potential consequences of your actions. Now we look at the other, the third theory, which is the total quality management. Um, this is when you have an organization that has all its staff committed to satisfying customer uh, needs. Okay, so it's about recognizing the gaps that you have and continuously improve, such that you provide uh, and also meet the needs of the customer. So at, your, at the end of the day, you have a high quality product. So basically, and, and services, you are not satisfied with the, the quality uh, of services or products that you're actually offering. So you want to keep learning over and over again, such that you can be able to provide the best. So what are the principles? Uh, make sure that you don't have errors. You don't have products with errors. So zero defects, that's what you're aiming at. You don't want errors. You want 100% perf uh, perfection. Uh, you need to work with the different departments in a collaborative manner, continuously learn, apply uh, quality improvement measures, make sure that you, you continuously learn and adapt. Look at the feedback that you get from the clients so that, that you can offer uh, customer focused um, a service, okay, where the, the customer is actually at the center of the services that you actually provide, okay. Um, the management and the employees need to work together. You, you can't produce quality goods or services without working together. And then the fourth theory is what we are calling the complexity theory, which can also be termed as uh, the uh, complex adaptive uh, system theory, other, um, other resources can call it the chaos uh, theory, okay? Uh, so it's one of the modern uh, theories of management that looks at organizations as complex and dynamic systems that are influenced by numerous interacting elements in a non-linear relationship. So we are going to look at the key, the key, key concepts of, uh, uh, of this theory. The, the first one is the non-linearity. 
okay? Uh, uh, with this, we are basically saying that uh, you are not having the, what we, we actually described in the earlier theories uh, of, of management, where we look at, say, that if you improve this, then you have better performance, okay? Uh, it doesn't happen just like that in, in organizations. So you'll have you have small changes that can result into bigger uh, uh, impact or greater changes within the organization. So it's not about you putting um, uh, and you having a greater change such that you can get a greater outcome. It may not necessarily be that. It may be that if you create a small change and you have a huge effect. Uh, so that is about the non-linearity um, as a concept. And then another one is what you call emergency. So within an organization, of course, you have different, you remember we said they are complex, okay? Within a complex organization, uh, behaviors and patterns can actually emerge, okay? So they can um, emerge at any moment. Um, so you should be aware of that. So have spontaneous creation of, of patterns and, and behaviors. Um, and then adaptation and self-organization, uh, which is about the organization having the ability to adjust without a central coordination. So things can actually happen uh, on their own without um, having someone commanding that adaptation happen, okay? Uh, so we can have changes that affect the organization and no one is actually leading the, the, um, uh, the organization in that adaptation process, but the organization will find itself reorganized. Uh, and then we have the dynamic networks where you have uh, different entities or different uh, uh, groups, uh, social interactions within the organization, but all these are actually uh, interconnected entities. And then we have attractors and retailers, okay? The states to which a system tends to, uh, tends or avoids. Of course, there are things that the, 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 the people within the organization may like, and there are those that the people within the organization may actually dislike. So you need to understand the states, what are the trends, what, what are people tending to, and what are people actually, uh, actually avoiding. And then we have what you call the age of chaos. And, and perhaps this is why this theory can also be termed as the chaos, uh, chaos theory. Okay, um, this you also need to realize that in management, having chaos may not be may, may not necessarily be a negative thing. Okay, so it can actually uh, be a positive thing that can create order. Okay, so you may need some level of chaos in order uh, for for the organization to actually adapt. So you move the next slide. <clears throat> Okay, <clears throat> and then also the other, the, 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 the practical application of this theory is actually in the fact that uh, we need to rethink the way we think about organizations as rigid structures and the mechanisms of control. Okay, so you be like we have seen that the organization can actually readapt uh, to a direction, to a particular direction without having con full control over the over that adaptation, okay? So you don't necessarily need to have a complete uh, exercise control to, to make sure that the organization can actually adapt, okay? So we need to rethink about having rigid systems, having these control measures in place uh, as um, in, in a way that we actually manage organizations, okay? So it also encourages you uh, to learn that organizations can reorganize themselves. It also allows you to experiment and see what really happens. So it means that uh, you, with this theory, you don't need to be um, rigid. You need to be open-minded. You need to try out things and see how, how things can actually turn out. So you continuously learn 
uh, experiment and learn from uh, what you have just seen. And then the last theory that we're going to look at is the, the re-engineering theory, uh, which is basically fundamental rethinking and radical re redesigning of organizations, which is about the fact that you see in the structuring of an organization should only de should mainly depend on the processes uh, that are within that organization. Okay, uh, it's about um, it's about being able to change things, uh, start afresh, replace rather than repair. This basically the, these are the key issues or concepts within the theory. So. Um, you you look at the, and this is actually where organizations are actually tending to uh, more than organization. You 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 actually eliminate um, sections of the organization that are not actually very active uh, in relation to the processes that the organization is actually involved in. Okay, so you want to to make sure that you don't have uh, inefficient. Uh, processes eliminate change them uh, and make sure that uh, you have an adaptable system that emphasizes efficiency speed uh, quality service reducing costs this is this is what it's all about and this actually uh, is is what most organizations um, did during the covid 19 uh, the restructuring which was happening uh, looking at the uh, um, people that you cannot um, that you cannot maintain in their job positions uh, and also only maintain those that are actually very, very essential. So it's about looking at the process. If you're producing this product, uh, if you're providing, providing this service, who are the people that actually should provide this service? And who are the people who are not very essential in providing these services? So it's about looking at the organization in terms of the processes that it is involved in and making sure that these processes are actually very, very, very efficient, reducing over, overhead costs, ensuring that the services are, are all uh, quality. So that marks the end of our presentation. Uh, unless you have any questions, 